Hello and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the permanent debt tab or the perm debt tab of the all-in-one model for underwriting acquisition and development. Now you can access this tab by coming here first to the summary tab and ensuring that the permanent financing module is toggled to yes. If it's not, the perm debt tab is not, does not appear along the tab ribbon, a ribbon here along the bottom. We toggle it back to yes and this yellow tab entitled Perm Debt appears. And we come here, and what we're gonna see is a few things. First, along the left-hand side is where we enter the inputs for our permanent debt. And then along here to the right is where all the, the cash flows that are impacted by these inputs off to the left, or our calculation modules. Now, this model includes both senior debt initially, with the option to have a mid-hold refinance. That's what this senior debt refinance is. And then we can also model junior or MES debt. And then we have a roll-up of both our senior and junior piece into what is here called total permanent financing. And so let's just kind of walk through what we have here along the left and see how that impacts the cash flows out to the right. Now here at the top, we have the funding date, which is obviously our analysis begin date. We have stabilized value, and that's important so that we can look at our uh, loan amount relative to our stabilized value and get a loan-to-value uh, metric. We also have the cost, and if this is a development deal, then it's going to show us our, uh, our total project cost. With an acquisition, it's our acquisition cost, and we can then look at the senior loan amount relative to that cost or our LTC metric. Then here we enter the senior debt loan amount. By default, there's just a dummy formula in there. Again, these blue font cells are input cells, but you can always have an input be a formula. And so here what I did is I just simply said, all right, I'm gonna take uh, six, the max of 65% LTV, or if this is a development deal, whatever the, the payoff is of the construction loan. So that's what the dummy formula is, but you'll enter whatever your loan amount is there, enter some loan fees, what your interest rate is. Now you can choose either fixed interest rate, or if we come to the left here, we can toggle and choose a variable interest rate or a floating rate. And when that happens, you'll notice that a rate per month row appears with inputs, and you just go ahead and edit those values to model out some variable rate uh, over your analysis period. So I'll toggle this back to fixed. Uh, then we choose our amortization. Uh, we enter the input in months. It tells us what that is in years. This then automatically tells us what is the funding month of the, of the permanent debt. Now in the case of an acquisition, that's going to be uh, time zero. In the case of a development deal, it's whenever the uh, permanent debt is set to take out the construction loan. And by default, that month is the uh, stabilization month. And so if you want to change the funding month, you just simply come to the summary tab. And here, let's say this is a development deal, so we toggle that to 18. When you change the stabilization date, so right now it's month 27. If we look at perm debt, notice funding month, month 27. We can change the funding month by changing the stabilization date. And there are really no other impacts to the model by doing that. All right, so that is our funding month. Also, when I turn on the construction module, the acquisition cost label turns to development cost. This is our total project cost. And then it tells us what our construction loan payoff is. And that way we can ensure that our permanent debt or senior debt piece is large enough to pay off the construction loan. And or if it's not, we know that we'll need to raise additional equity at that stage. Uh, then we have payoff month. And the reason this matters or is an input is by default, the payoff month is the end of the analysis period, all right? Uh, this permanent loan goes through to the end of the analysis period. Now, if the permanent loan goes beyond the analysis period, just simply enter for payoff month the end of your analysis period. However, if you expect a mid-hold payoff of, of this permanent debt, you'll change that. And as soon as you change that, down here, a refinance permanent debt or senior debt piece appears. Uh, 
So then we have the interest only period. And in this case, it's 24 months from when loan funds in month 27. Uh, then we have, it just tells us what the amortizing payments are on a monthly basis, what our interest only payments are on a monthly basis, what the loan payoff is at maturity or at the end of the 60 or you know, at the, the term that goes from month 27 through month 60. And then we added a few iterations ago this lender reserve calc. And, and this is just a basic calculation to say, okay, how much in reserves would we need? Let's say we need um, insurance reserves and we need those for three months. It's just gonna do a, just a, a quick calculation on how much we would need for insurance, add in, in taxes, maybe there's a capital reserve. Um, and this cell here is just giving us a ballpark of what those reserves might be. Then we come down here. In this case, we do have a mid hold refinance, right? So uh, we'll set this loan amount to be something. Hopefully it's at least equal to our payoff. Well, the proceeds are su sufficient to cover that. Enter loan fees, interest rate, also either floating or fixed, uh, amortizing payment. The funding month will always be I'm sorry, yeah, the funding month will always be the payoff month of the initial loan. And then uh, interest only period, what you choose, amortizing payments, if we set some interest uh, only period, let's say go 12 months, one year of IO, then it'll tell us what the IO payment is, as well as the payoff at loan maturity. And so that's those are our senior pieces. And then again, we can model the junior piece. Uh, either debt or either a mes debt or or a second mortgage. If it's set to zero, then there is no uh, junior piece. If there is, let's say we go one and a half million, it will tell us what the combined loan to value is of the senior piece and the junior piece. Some fee, whatever the interest rate is. Again, we can do either floating or fixed, and then we enter here amortization period, funding month. Uh, it can it doesn't have to fund at the same time that the senior the initial senior piece funds uh, the term and the term is always going to be through to the end of your analysis period. There's no way to do a mid hold refinance of your junior piece, uh, any interest only, etc. And so that's the perm debt tab. Let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, thanks for your time.